how we met? I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, it was early spring, and I was out digging holes in the park and filling them up, as one does. And the ground was just harder than hen's teeth. So I was putting in work. I got a massive pile of dirt on my shovel and launched it over shoulder. Next thing I know, there's this bird squawking behind me. I turn around and look, and she was just covered. Oh, her feathers got ruffled from that one. And I turned to her and I said, I apologize, ma'am. But she continued on and on and on. And I said, I apologize. Don't be a grouse. It was an accident. But I was hooked. Well, I was at my attorney's office signing divorce papers. Ugh, I married this peacock. He was so cocky the way he used to just strut around even at our wedding even at our wedding he wasn't even paying attention to me he was just staring at all these other birds that were flying around the cathedral anyway anyway i'm signing the divorce papers i'm ready to get rid of this cocky peacock in my life and i walk outside i'm just taking a deep breath of fresh air to try to calm my mind and I noticed a, a nice park across the street so I went and sat on a park bench just trying to gather my thoughts gather my emotions before I went home to the kids I sat there just thinking about my life and what would come next then out of nowhere this big pile of wet dirt comes flying over and hits me and covers me. And the pile of dirt actually apologized. I don't even know how that was possible. What it was, it was. And he said, oh, oh, ma'am. And immediately I thought, ma'am, excuse me? Do I look like a ma'am? Ugh. He kind of gave me a look like, oh, please, but I was in no mood for it. And I probably should have said no. But when he asked me to go on a date with him so he could make it up to me, I said yes. Our first date was amazing. I took her to go see mud wrestling. You know, I'd gotten free tickets because, well, I provided the mud. It was a 30-woman free-for-all for Queen of the Mud Pit. And this chick, she entered in without a second thought. And I maintain she would have won, but for some reason she took a swan dive at the end. He stood me up. He told me to meet him on this corner, and I stood there for at least five, seven minutes, at least, at least five to seven minutes. And he didn't have a cellular telephone for me to call him to ask him where he was or if he was running late. And it was just so, it was so rude. And so I decided to fly home by myself and cursing men the whole way. And, uh, Later on, I decided to see, because he mentioned something about going to an arena for a special event. So later on, I decided to stretch my wings a little bit and fly over to the arena and see what was happening over there. Well, I see dirt coming out of the arena with a mud-covered snowy owl. And I thought, well, he has a type. Okay, so he has a type. And I flew back home again. That was the first flying lesson. See, I'm the kind of guy who, you know, keeps himself planted to the ground. But she scooped me up and we took off. And my love for her was flying high. Well, as it turned out... We both made an awful mistake. I went to the wrong corner, and 
He went to the right one, but a snowy owl was there, and he had kind of forgotten what I looked like. And he said, hey, are you ready? And she said, sure. <laughs> Can you believe that? And they went into the arena. There was some kind of mud wrestling competition, and she jumped in. Ugh. <laughs> That's something I would never do. Look how pristine my white feathers are. Do I look like I would jump into a vat of mud, especially on a first date? Anyway, anyway. What really sealed the deal was the time he invited me over for dinner. And he was very nervous, and he had a beautiful table set. He had candlelight, and his dirt was very dried out. There was no mud in sight anywhere, so I wasn't going to get too dirty. <laughs> and um, I asked, what are we having to eat? And he said, you know, it doesn't really matter. I said, okay. And he said, what really matters is how it's cooked. And I said, well, you're right. You're right. So how are you cooking dinner? And he showed me, he unveiled this unbelievable air fryer. And I said, oh my God, this is the one. I'm not going to say it was a shotgun wedding, but Pilot was already under wing by the time we walked down the aisle. And after that, we could not keep our hands off each other. It was just a flurry of plumage and potting soil. And that continued on for a long time. I was crazy about this bird. It was really just a big whirlwind. From the moment he asked me to the divorce, it's just all a blur, really. Um... Things were good at first, and um, of course we had Pilot very early on, and I had my children from my previous marriage with the Peacock, and we continued to um, bust out offspring, and I laid many an egg, and a lot of them hatched, most of them hatched. So I think Dirt had trouble keeping up with all of the responsibilities of a marriage to a snowy owl, which is, you know, unto itself is a huge undertaking. And all of those children, it's a lot. And I think he just got overwhelmed. Of course, I took the kids and I left immediately when I found out what was going on. He tried turning it around on me. He saw me in the kitchen preparing the Thanksgiving turkey and said that I was cheating on him. Can you believe that? Ugh. It's just, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. There was always an excuse why he had to be playing out in the dirt with something or someone. It was just... I'm not going to say any more out of respect for our children. He's been slandering me all over the internet every chance he gets. Even on some morbidly obese woman's channel. And you have saved enough money by not paying your owl amoni on time and sparse owl support payments for the children. I'm sure you can afford your own air fryer. Ah, uh, the divorce. Um, she had dug up that I was filling a hole on Groundhog Day. I found out she was getting stuffed by some turkey on Thanksgiving. Well, the feathers flew, and when the dust settled, she snagged everything out of the house took flight with the kids south for the winter. All I want is to see the kids and get my air fryer back. She keeps saying that she sent the kids over, they knocked on the door and nobody answered. Of course I didn't answer, I don't have arms. Just please send them over to see me and send them with my air fryer. Please, I beg you. 
Yes, I do have some, just a few more things to say. I want to leave this interview in a positive frame of mind and leave the viewers with a positive mindset. Love is out there for all of us. Sometimes you have to go through a cocky peacock and a pile of dirt, but eventually you'll get there. You'll get there. Thank mm -hmm. you.